What's up, everybody? Today, I want to talk to you about what I consider the single number one best sight reading software on the market today. I wish there was something like this back when I was first learning to sight read because I feel like I could have cut down on almost all the frustration and my, you know, spinning the wheels and kind of stuck feeling I was having in sight reading and learned it like way faster if I would have had access to something like this. Um, and the reason this is so critical, and I'll get, I'm going to go really in depth into the software in a bit, but I just want to say like, this is the first software I found that systematized sight reading. So you learn it systematically instead of just kind of randomly reaching for examples. Um, and after that, I'm also going to talk about how to develop a sight reading long-term workout plan that you do daily to systematically go through each key and improve your sight reading until you're just at a master sight reading level. Um, so this software, basically the way you want to think about it is there's a, a term in psychology called the zone of optimal development, right? And basically the concept is, okay, there's stuff inside your circle. This is stuff that you already know you can already sight read easily. And then there's stuff outside your circle that you can't sight read yet. And the farther outside your circle, the harder it is. The problem is what I used to do, I used to just kind of print out random sheet music and then try to sight read it. The problem is a lot of the sheet music I was printing out was easy, either way too easy or way too hard. So I'd either be in my optimal circle and it's really easy so it's not doing anything or to be so far outside my optimal circle that it's like, it's too challenging and it just got really frustrating and I never got the hang of it. So basically, you want to think about like weightlifting, right? If you can lift 50 pounds right now, you want to lift like 55 pounds or 60 pounds to get stronger, a little more than you're doing now. If you take five pound dumbbells and you're curling them, it's not going to help you because it's way too easy. It's not challenging you. And at the same time, if you take a 100 pound dumbbell and you can't even lift it, that's not helping you because you can't even lift the weight. So it's not going to strengthen your muscles. Same thing with sight reading. You, you want to get something that's just a little bit higher than what you can do now. That's how you make the fastest progress. All right. So let's talk, go into this actual system on this software. So basically what happens when you go into settings, you can first pick the instrument. Obviously we're choosing piano. Then this is my favorite part. You can choose the level. And this is what I mean by systematically. So there's level a half, one, and then through eight. And as you can see down here, if you're on level a half, the rhythms are very simple, whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, and dotted halves, that's it. And as you go up the levels, they slowly and systematically add in more and more rhythms. And same thing with, this is a big one too. Leaps are a lot of times a tricky part in sight reading. You know, in the, in the first section, there's no leaps greater than the second. That means like a C to a D. So there's nothing, it's very easy. And as you get up, it slowly and gradually adds them on so you don't have to be frustrated trying to do these large leaps when you're beginning at sight reading. But as you get more and more leaps down, it starts getting easier and easier. Now you can increase the, the gap of the, um, of the leap you're trying to do. So it's very systematic. So let's say you're let at a level four sight reading. So let's just press four. Oh, the other thing it has, it has hands separate versus hands together. So at first, it's only hands separate and then gradually it adds hands together in there too to make it a little harder. So let's say you're at a level four, click level four. Um, now in this mode, you can choose the number of measures. This is another thing I like about this because I remember trying to sight read and I would have these very long songs and I would get sometimes like maybe like 14, 15 measures in and I would start losing it, losing the sight reading and I'll get really frustrated because it's hard to like get back on track. And I think it's much more efficient to take very small examples and just play a small example and then reset and then play another small example instead of going through super long examples that get you frustrated. Um, and then once you get off, it's like hard to get back on. So I like using a very small um, number of measures. And if you just press start, what happens, it just gives you an example at a level four difficulty. And this is super nice because you can play through this example and then another one. I always think to, uh, what's that? There's some dude that makes like rap beats. And have you heard on the radio where he's like, another one. And then it's uh, before it goes into the song. Anyway, so you can get unlimited different examples. So you can play through one, get another one, get another one. And the nice part about this, oh, I forgot one more thing. Okay, go back to settings. One other thing you can do, you can choose time signature, 
right? Because as we're sight reading, the problem is sometimes it's it's too hard to learn like, okay, now this new song, it's in a different time signature, it's in a different key signature, and it has different notes in it, obviously, um, and it might be like different rhythms and stuff. So you're trying to learn like four things at once. Here you can say, okay, for this week, I'm going to stick to 4-4 four, four key signatures, and uh, I'm going to stick in C major, right? You can pick your key. So you can say, okay, this week, 4-4 four, four time signature, only in C major. So it, it makes it way easier to learn at the start, and then you can gradually add in more key signatures and time signatures. We're going to talk a lot more about that when we go over the long-term plan of how to learn sight reading. All right, so let's go to regular practice mode. So remember, you can do another one to keep doing more examples. Another cool thing that I really love is you can do the metronome here. Um, a lot of things, problems with sight reading is people have trouble because they stop. And I used to have a lot of trouble with that where I would stop even though in a real sight reading situation, you have to keep going even if you mess up. You know, if you're playing in a choir and you mess up, you can't just stop because people are still singing. You have to find your place and keep going. So you can literally put the metronome at, you know, 60, a slow tempo, hit start, um, and it'll actually play through with the metronome it'll actually play the song too i like turning it off so if you press this music note it turns off the music so you just play with the metronome i don't like having the music in there it kind of just distracts me and it's pointless so i just use the metronome and then obviously another thing you can do is start it very slow and then gradually ramp up the tempo it's another way that it's systematically and incrementally putting you just outside of your comfort zone, just a little bit, so you're not frustrated, you're making progress, right? If, if, it's, if it's way outside your comfort zone, it's gonna be very frustrating and you're not gonna gain anything. If it's just a little bit, then you can systematically ramp it up. Here's another thing I like about this. Um, if you go back to settings, so we were doing regular practice mode in that example. Now here's timed practice mode. Now this, what I like about it is it's very specific to your situation. So you can say, okay, let's say you play for a choir, right? In an actual circumstance, the choir teacher is handing out new music, let's say. So he gives you the music, but he's also handing it out to the other students. He's uh, maybe talking about the piece. So you might have like, let's say you have on average three minutes before you start playing. Now you'd probably have even more than that, but let's just say three minutes. So you can set the countdown timer, three minutes, 60 seconds times three, that's 180 seconds. And you literally hit start. And literally, you have a countdown. So you can imagine, okay, the choir teacher just gave me the music. I have to learn this. I have I have three minutes to kind of analyze the piece, work it through my fingers. And once this timer stops, then it's like, okay, now I have to sight read this at 60 beats per minute. So it's very specific to what you would actually be doing in real life. Um, so let's go back. I want to show you a couple other things that it has on it. Uh, go practice. Oh, now i got to do all this again. Yeah, four, whatever, four, four, C major. Another thing that's cool, and we're just going to put this to one second for now because I want to show you some of this stuff, is you can do the um, um, the disappearing measures. Now this, honestly, to me, this isn't like a necessary step. It's kind of just a funner way to do it for me. So if you hit start, basically what happens is um, it gives you the metronome count in, and you'd start playing along with it, and then the measure will disappear. So it's literally kind of like a real life situation where you can't go back because there's always in sight reading, there's this thing in our brain that wants to go back if we mess up and repeat the last measure. But in a real situation, you can't. The singers are going to keep singing or whoever you're playing with is going to keep playing. You can't go back. So it literally disappears on you and it makes it very realistic to a true situation. Another thing you can do is you can set a cursor. I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Personally, I don't like this. Uh, what it does is is it gives you this cursor that shows you exactly where you should be in the music. I tried this personally. I just thought it was kind of distracting and annoying. I don't like having the cursor in there, but hey, you could try it for you. Maybe it'll work for you. You know, you could give it a shot. Um, so this is what I like a lot about this software. I never had this. What I would do, the first, when I was first starting out, I would literally just print random sheet music. It was terrible. I would get so frustrated because... All the songs would either be way too easy or way too hard. And at the same time, I was trying to learn every song would have a new key signature, a new time signature, different rhythms, different amounts of rest. Some would have triplets, some would not. This is a way where you don't have to worry about all that. It does all that for you in incremental progress. 
Um, and even after that, what I did was I got a sight reading series of books. And that was a lot better than printing off random ones. But the problem with that is, is the books weren't that big. So it might have like two or three examples in each key, right? There's 24 different keys. If it has two examples in each key, that's 48 exercises. That'd be like the whole book. But let's be honest, if you have two examples in the key of C major, are you really going to master sight reading in C major with two examples? No, you need like 100 examples, you know, but they're not going to fit that into a book. But with this software, you can get unlimited examples, so you can just keep practicing. Okay, now let's talk about the long-term workout plan. Um, By the way, um, this, I, I forgot to mention, it does cost money, but it's very cheap. It's 35 bucks a year, which for me, like, I saved... I mean, from what I was spending on even sheet music, to me, that's easily worth it. And I'm going to tell you, I I actually talked to the guy that owns the site because I really like this product. And he said he'd give me um, a code you guys can use to get get 10% off of that. So you can even get it for around like 30 bucks a year. But I'll go into that at the end of the video. But first, I want to go over the plan, the, the kind of workout plan I would suggest using. So basically... I love systematizing things, how we learn scales, how we learn technique and everything is you take one key a week and you just freaking master that key. And I believe that's how you should do it for sight reading too. Don't try to learn all the keys at the same time. Take the key of C, master the key of C until it's absolutely rock solid, then move on to the next key, then move on to the next key for for one week each. So here's how it would look. Now this is an example I did, so I'm just going to delete all these colors, but I'll show you what they mean in a bit. So every day for a week, week one is the key of C major, right? So you would see where you are in the key of C, right? You might do a level one half, right? The easiest level. And you might, I would start out doing only 4-4 time signature and only in C major, right? Hit start. And this might be super easy for you. If it's super easy, boom, check it off the list. Put it, mark it as green. That means you can do level one. Then go back to the back to the thing, back to settings. Then say, okay, let's try. Well, actually, that was level one half. I actually forgot to um, put that in here. So let's do insert one left, level one half. Okay. Then you try level one. Let's say you do level one, regular practice mode. Let's say this is easy too. Boom, you mark that up. Then you try level two back here. Let's say level two is easy. Mark that in green. Let's say level three. You can play it, but you're not confident with it. It's not like easy, but like, yeah, I can make it through most of the time. That's when you mark it in yellow. That means you're working on it, right? And let's say you practice for three days, and after three days, level three is easy. Boom, mark it in green. Start rolling level four. Now level four is out of yellow. And let's say you get to the end of week one. Okay, now you're like, week one, level C, or the key of C is at a level four. Boom, then you go to the key of G for the next week. And let's say you practice a whole next week, you get G, because G is very similar to C, it only has one sharp and flat, so you might be able to get that to level four green, and level five is yellow. Now let's say you do D. D, after a week, you might get level five green, and level six yellow. So you mark it like that. Let's say next week, the key of A, three sharps. Let's say this is challenging for you. The third sharp is throwing you for a loop. You might only get through level two green, And level three might be at a yellow, right? And you keep doing this for 12 weeks. Here's here's what you do next. So you do it for 12 weeks. I'm not going to go through and mark all these colors. But what will happen is this effect where you go back to C after doing all of these. And your C, without even practicing it anymore, will already be at a level five or six. And the reason is because once you practice all these hard keys, you go back to the key of C, which has no sharps and flats. It's going to be way easier and a lot of your other sight reading skills are notched up levels. So you can get to that six already. And then maybe you practice for a couple weeks and you're already at a level seven. And this is just an example. It might take you longer than this. You know, there's no um, exact science to how long it's going to take. But it's, it, I'm telling you, it's way faster to do it this way than to just print off random sheet music from the internet. Um, here's another thing. What I would do is the first time you go through, take one key a week like I was saying... And then practice everything in that key, right? Your scales, you're practicing the key of C. Your arpeggios, you're practicing the key of C. Finger gauntlet, finger drills, you're practicing in the key of C. And your sight reading. So the key of C in your brain is just being hit from so many different angles, right? And then you do key of G, so you're like one sharp. You're hitting it at so many different angles, so your brain internalizes the key. One thing you can do 
If you go through the first time and the sight reading start to get easy in the key of C, you could say, okay, now I'm going to go through it the second time and I'm going to take two keys a week. So I alternate between C and G. So now it's a little harder because you have to shift your brain between a couple different keys, but it's not as hard as doing all 12 keys at once. Then maybe the third time you go through it, you say, okay, I'm going to shift between three different keys. Then the fourth time, I'm going to shift between six. And then finally, the fifth time you're running through this, um, you're going to shift it through all 12. Now, like I said, this is a long-term process. It might take you six months before you're getting through every single key. Um, another thing I want to just quick talk about. Um, well, first, uh, so this is a long-term process. It might take you six months, but think about it as in once you get these all green, it's like your sight reading is good. Like, obviously, you can always improve more, but you can confidently sit back and say, like, okay, I've, I've freaking mastered sight reading. Like, my sight reading is rock solid, and, you know, you can always get it better, but it's at least at a good level where I feel confident playing for choirs, playing with different instrumentalists, stuff like that. Another thing is these steps. Um, this is, I go over this more in depth in another video, so I'm not going to get too in depth into it. But basically, sight reading is a series of sub skills, right? You have one example, one of, one of the skills is a skill to be able to re, like, scan through the piece really fast and find patterns so when you get to them, they're easier. That's one sub skill. Another sub skill is playing without stopping and forcing your brain to keep playing even when you make mistakes. Another skill is called keyboard topography. Basically, the, the, the skill of finding the notes without looking down so you can spend more time looking at the sheet music and reading ahead and your fingers are able to feel the notes. That's another skill that you have to develop. And... Also, reading notes as chords, that's another sub-skill. But what a lot of people do is they just sight read and they just play through the example a hundred times. And what happens is, I'll give you my example, I used to do that all the time, and I would just constantly look down right at my hands. And I never developed the skill of keyboard topography and feeling the keyboard. And since I would always look down, it became a crutch, and I never developed that skill because I was using these other skills to compensate for it. But eventually I hit this sticking point where I was stuck because the sight reading got hard enough where I, there's no way I had time to look up and down like that. So what I suggest you do is when you sight read a piece, step one is just scan the piece and look for patterns. Step two, you just play without stopping. Use the metronome to build that skill up. Then you play through it again without looking down. And you force yourself to look up even if it's hard. That way you develop the skill of keyboard topography. Step four, you play it. And you literally, you have to know some music theory uh, behind this. But you literally verbalize every chord that's being played. And this kind of is more advanced. It's when you get more advanced examples that actually have like chords and not single notes. Um, but this will help you develop the ability to play chords. And recognize chords very fast instead of recognizing a ton of notes, which is a lot harder. Um, and then, so you do, you play each example like, three times. Step one is just scanning. So you play it, you scan it, then you play it three times, then you do another one, you know, and you go on to the next example and then another one and you go on to another one. Um, but this is, I think it's a much more systematic process than just like randomly playing through it. All right. So that's basically the system of how to learn sight reading. Now, how to get this with a discount code. So like I said, first of all, you can here, I'll, I'll bring it up on a new window because I'm already signed in on this one. So all you have to do is go to this site, sightreadingfactory.com, and I'll have a link to it below in the description. And you can try it for free. If you try it for free, it'll give you like 20 examples. Um, so you can like try it out, but it's not like a long-term strategy. Um, so if you just want to buy it right away, just hit pricing. And I'm going to show you how to get the discount. So it's $34.99 a year. So $35 a year. To me, that's easily worth it to have a tool like this. You just hit register, enter your name, email. Actually, I'll just do a test one. Um, test at blah, 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 dot com. Password, confirm password. I agree. You hit subscribe. That basically signs you up for the free course. And then, oh, I can't. Apparently, this is not a, <laughs> I'll just do test at gmail.com or test blah, 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 gmail.com. Password, password. And here's where you enter the discount code here. So it's 34 bucks, but you just enter superhuman here. Super human, no spaces or anything, hit apply, and then you see you get, you know, almost 349 off, 350 off. So your total is like 31 bucks. And then you can do either credit card or PayPal, and you just click that and then you fill out the information. 
Um, so that's basically how you do it. This code is only valid till August 31st, 2017. Um, so after that, I would still recommend getting it. I mean, it's an extra three bucks. Um, but I would highly suggest if you're serious about learning piano, if you're serious about learning sight reading, this is the best thing on the market I found by far. Um, I highly recommend it. And I don't usually promote other people's products. I, I usually think, uh, it sounds arrogant, I usually think my product's the best. But I can't build a sight reading product that's better than this. It has everything I would want in a sight reading product. That's all I got for you. Remember, you have till August 31st if you want to get the discount. So you can sign up today. It's sightreadingfactory.com. Thanks for watching. Peace out and happy practicing.